In this total pro build, we're going to attempt to simplify and make sailing affordable for all. Meet Pro, why not? He's a perfect day sailor. Now we're going to attempt to turn him into a micro cruiser. In this episode, we're going to build his armor. Why not's new armor? Formula meter pop apply. Yeah. And then we got length 400, width 40, 120 liters of displacement. At the shear, straight cut, straight cut, straight plow on the shear. In the connection, 90 degree angle over here on this connection. At the bottom, we rise with the lock at 2.5 centimeters towards the bow. So if we have 25 centimeters over here, only the bottom has got a curve rising up to 22.5 at the bow. Okay, length of top at shear is 200 and at the bottom at the chine 186. Bottom panels are 15 wide at max width in the middle by 185 long. Inside we have butt blocks, width of butt blocks is 10, 4 more poplar and we have shear clamps. Spruce, 25 by 12 millimeters. I made up three different armors. Uh, they all have 125 liters of displacement. I came to that amount uh, because I wanted half the bridge deck, half the arcus, and the weight of the armor is about, plus a few provisions, a little bit of water. It comes out to about 60 kilos. And uh, then I want to be able to go there, so that's another 70. So roughly 125 liters is the displacement of these three armors. That's armor number one. It's, it's very wide, a shallow draft, flat bottom, um, 125 liters on that one. This is number two. Very narrow bottom, it draws 30% uh, more than that one and has about 12% more wetted surface and this one's exactly in the middle between these two like this to, 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 to get my curve I usually need another person to help me out and that's how I get my curve I mark it over there then I mark it over here and, and between these two points this point and that point I take my baton and I make a nice curve, then I look down my curve, I make sure okay, it's nice. Okay, so uh, that's the model, this one. Um, so now I can trace it out. Here's the piece, I've traced out. This is my template, this is my model. It's uh, got a nice sanded curve. And I just trace it out. Okay, I've I've traced out the bottom, both sides. I use the I use the first piece that I have only one cut on the one side. I use it to trace out this new the second bottom. I flip it over both sides, keeping my center line down the middle. Once I do that, I'm gonna cut out with a jigsaw. Once it's cut out, I'm gonna use this piece to trace out the second side on the original bottom. So um, I've, I've glued up my, that's the bottom, and those are the two sides. Um, because of the cold uh, temperatures, I, don't, I can't be gluing on the floor, this epoxy will never harden. So I'm doing it high up, and the way I've done it is, there's a piece of wood over there and I've just screwed the whole business onto the piece of wood and then I clamp it. Glued on my shear clamp. This is the side of the armor. One of the sides. Shear clamp is glued on with uh, polyurethane. One panels are glued up and they're full length. Um, I drill holes uh, for stitch and glue so I can tie it up with the cable ties. I always put my first hole exactly in the middle of the connection so I know that it's exactly in the middle of both sheets 
and then from there I start going and the way I do it is I just take a piece of scrap aluminium metal doesn't matter I drill two holes uh, 15 centimeters away so from each other put a little bit into the new hole and then you move it over and it marks you the next hole and then you just drill it in like that you do it first to this way and then you start in the middle so and you go that way I put a little bit in the, in the previous hole I drill the next hole I put the template exactly on the end of the plug and I go in now I simply move my bit over to my new hole my template is fixed and I'm ready for a drill stitch in the canoe once you get the stitch in um, I start stitching from the middle and I stitch that way and then I, and then I stitch the other way so you, you put all your cable ties in here over here they aren't even connected yet and you will start stitching from here from the middle make sure that both edges are just touching you, you, you don't want any of the edges overhanging down or overhanging this way you want both corners to touch and you stitch from one side and you just gradually stitch them one after the other until the shear clamps uh, I leave them long when I glue them on so then I just do a rough cut before I start stitching and then I stitch I leave the bow open once the boat is stitched up and the bow is still open I start doing cuts like this I've done this one now I'm going to do this one I use a Japanese saw once I do these two then the bow will close our bow looking much better and now what I do is I clamp it closed and I take a saw and I just I just cut it all the way down until I go through and then it's a perfect fit. Okay guys, I just want to stop for a short while and explain a couple things. Uh, basically, uh, boat building, that's, uh, that's my second job after making a living. And my third job is filming and editing and uploading and, and documenting and all that stuff. Uh, basically, I really need a hand for this channel to grow and I need likes and shares and subscribes and comments and all that stuff. If, if, if you guys kick in and give me all that likes and all that stuff, then it really help me and my channel and it will help me build more boats and, 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 and we can build them together. And if you guys can comment and tell me what you like, what you don't like and, and give me tips and, and we'll learn to do this stuff together. I don't mind, I'll be happy with that. But what I'm saying is like, the more you got of those uh, things, you know, the more clicks and clocks and all that, then that's what, that's what, that's what helps uh, Google and uh, and uh, YouTube and 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 they, that's how they rank your channel higher and they put you into search engines and high, with a higher ranking and your and your stuff gets found easier and then you get more views and then you get all this and then you get all that and that really 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 helps okay guys so please like subscribe and comment and all that stuff and share and don't forget to share and uh, we're very grateful eh thanks all the best Balkans of yards. Uh, before you do stitch and glue, before you start doing your fillets, uh, I take clear epoxy um, with a paint brush and I, I paint the seams. So basically you're wetting out the seams and that gives a bit of adhesion for the fillets. So I wet out one half and then I fillet it and then I'll do In that. budget boat building, uh, we do fillets with... Uh, we use thickened epoxy and we mix in sawdust, saw powder and basically it's really simple. This is how you'd go. You want to make sure your fillet goes way down into your cable ties 
and fills up the holes. I personally don't take them out. My boats uh, don't live in the water. Uh, so I'm not really worried about uh, leaving the cable ties in there. And anyway, I don't believe there will ever be a problem because when I look on the other side, my, my thickened epoxy has always come through the holes and has filled up the whole hole. This afternoon, okay, it's the done. next day, so my epoxy is still slightly sticky. It has the canoe been uh, glued up yesterday with epoxy, fiberglass, and then I just put a hot air blower inside. I close that up. It really doesn't need a long time. You just, if you do this for about an hour, the stuff kicks and really starts working. Here's the armor, done. It's uh, filleted and glass taped on the inside. Uh, now we have to start working on uh, filling out shear clamps and putting in a couple bulkheads, two or three, depends whether I haven't decided if I'm doing two uckers or three uckers, here's the model. I'm thinking of having a third acker coming in the middle. So under uck, where uckers come, that's where bulkheads will be. And uh, that's basically the model. So that's the armor we just made over here. Another thing that I forgot to say is when you're doing bows, um, I don't fiberglass the bells from the inside, I just leave them like that. And uh, the cable ties, when I'm, when I'm filleting, I leave them open on the bell. So the bell is spread open, so I can wet it out with clear epoxy on the inside, both sides. And then, I, and then with my putty knife, I just fill it up with thickened epoxy, and then I tie my cable ties, zit, 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 and I close them up. And then it all squeezes out, squishes out everywhere. Then I just take a piece of wood and I just do that. And now I'm going to fiberglass my bow only from the outside. It's a, when the bows are so narrow, it's really difficult to fiberglass them uh, inside. And on, on such a short distance, there's no problem at all. A couple layers of fiberglass outside and you're done. The, the biggest advantage about poplar ply, 4 millimeters, is that you can see the voids in the middle layer. Because, uh, because the ply is uh, light colored and uh, the veneers are thin, so if you hold it up in the light you can find your voids, it come, you see it through, and then I break it away, I fill it up, and uh, I put a piece of fiberglass over here. I'm going to fiberglass the bottom, at the moment uh, I'm working on I'm cleaning up my, uh, so I've done a quick, I've sanded this quickly and now I'm going to wet it out with clear epoxy, then I'm going to fill it with uh, thickened epoxy with sawdust and then I'm going to, and then I fiberglass the bottom, uh, my fiberglass running to the top of, to above the water line, we'll see about that, but anyway once you fiberglass your bottom, you're finished, you don't need to tape it on the outside.